Greetings everyone and thanks for tuning in for another Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a former military defense turned landmark location that's located just off of Tower Avenue out of St. Paul, Minnesota, atop bluffs overlooking the confluence of the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers, boasting a range of educational materials pertaining to the region's past and rumored to harbor a number of resulting restless spirits. Are you prepared to brave the history and hauntings? of the historic Fort Snelling. Historically recognized as Badote, or the place where two rivers meet, land that would eventually hold this fort would initially act as a point of great spiritual significance to the Dakota tribe, with archaeological evidence pointing towards human habitation of the area that spans back nearly 10,000 years. In September of 1805, one Zebulon Pike would arrive at the confluence of the two mighty flows and would negotiate the purchase of around 100,000 acres of land, a deal which was completed in 1819 upon the first delivery of trade goods, and just a few months following, construction of a defense was started. Initially dubbed Fort St. Anthony, this defense's moniker would be officialized as Fort Snelling upon its completion in 1825, and through the Civil War, it would act as an important training grounds for Minnesotan recruits looking to support the Union. Most significantly during this period, the Dakota War of 1862, or the Sioux Uprising, would consist of a series of conflicts between the U.S. and Santee Sioux, who hailed from a handful of eastern Dakota tribes. The U.S. would offer said tribes cash annuities, debt payments, and weight in provisions in exchange for large areas of land, and following a reluctant, and by some accounts forced acceptance would displace the four Dakota bands to a reservation. Through the summer of 1862, tensions would boil over and the Dakota would send warriors to slaughter hundreds of those settling onto their ancestral lands. Occupied by the Civil War, a government response was delayed, allowing for this assault to persist for a time. However, on September 23rd of 1862, an army of volunteer infantry, artillery, and citizen militia would assemble at Fort Snelling and would retaliate against the Dakota at the Battle of Wood Lake, which would result in a loss of 358 settlers, 77 soldiers, and 29 militiamen, and in the complete elimination of all present Dakota warriors, a final number would which, sadly, goes undocumented. Following their defeat, around 1,600 Dakota people were forced into an area just below Fort Snelling, where around 300 would die. In preceding this harsh time, the U.S. government would literally banish any remaining Dakota from Minnesota entirely. Over the years, Fort Snelling would be utilized as a primary supply base in the Dakota Territory, as well as as a training center for soldiers in the Native American campaigns, in the Spanish-American War, and in World Wars I and II. Incidentally, through World War II, Snelling would welcome an astounding 300,000 inductees. However, towards the end of the conflict, the site would eventually be decommissioned, and in 1945 would be passed on to the Veterans Administration. In 1960, Fort Snelling would be designated as Minnesota's first national historic landmark, after which it would undergo restructuralization and refurbs, with its management handled under the Minnesota Historical Society. And more recently, in June of 2020, the historic Fort Snelling Revitalization Project was launched, during which the old non-historic visitor center was demolished, a wealth of utility work was performed, and land along the bluff was graded and prepped for new pathways. While Fort Snelling is closed as of the release of this upload being March of 2022, it is expected to reopen on May 28th of this very year for Memorial Day weekend and will continue to focus on the education of the histories of what is now considered one of Minnesota's most well-known historic places, as well as of the state itself. From its earliest years, the entirety of Fort Snelling has been surrounded in local legends and chilling ghost stories, with those frequenting its bounds from settlers up into modern tourists describing orbs visible to the naked eye, strange mists and fog that blink at the property alone, and ghostly forms captured in photography. Closely following its building, soldiers and those living near the fort begin reporting doors that opened and closed on their own, objects sighted moving inexplicably or even floating in mid 
midair, and the constant feeling of being watched or stalked by something unseen, something malevolent, and many held the belief that the area's supernatural phenomena were likely linked to angered spirits resulting from the defense's construction atop what was considered sacred grounds for millennia prior. Incidentally, up into recent times, a host of full-bodied apparitions in ancient native attire have been spied wondering about. Some battle-ready warriors, and others, women and children who appear terrified. Reported across the whole of Snelling are odd lights sighted within buildings that are closed and locked up, ghostly faces that peer from windows at the living, extreme cold spots and inexplicable temperature fluctuations, and lights that flick off suddenly, leaving all present in total darkness. The entities of both settlers and soldiers in clothing or garb spanning the fort's existence have been encountered, some looking lost or confused, others seemingly going about tasks from their lives long lost, and others still locked in battle, and many of these phantom forms have appeared so real that onlookers have assumed them actors, until watching them disappear entirely. Lastly, and most disturbingly, the area that formerly hosted a Dakota concentration camp is supposedly one of the most dangerously haunted places on site, and those who have braved it have told of the smells of blood, sickness, body fluids, and burning flesh, of a constant sense of anxiety, distress, or dread, and of run-ins with ominous, shadowy beings that have been known to chase those who cross their paths. Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll see you next time.